Today I'm going to be talking about um, my my tenth session with my DBT skills group, um, and I'm going to start with talking about the homework. So the homework that I did was check off skills to practice this week. While practicing skills, stay as aware and mindful as you can. Write it down later. So this is just an example that is in here. Literally, it's an example of what you could do. And someone said. Um, so the name of the skill they used was participating. I think I talked about these skills in a previous video. If not, I will get to it. Um, how did you practice the skill? I went to a party and participated. It's kind of self-explanatory. Uh, what body sensations, moods, feelings, and thoughts accompanied this practice? I felt a tight knot in my stomach, shallow breathing, dry mouth, anxiety that other people would not like me. Later, I enjoyed the conversation, smiled, noticed other people around me, and ended up having a good time. What body sensations, moods, feelings, and thoughts are you having as you write this? I still feel some anxiety about being at the party, but also relieved that people did not reject me and that I enjoyed myself. So what I did was on Wednesday, and this was like a couple Wednesdays ago, I did the skill of observing. <clears throat> Um, how I practiced the skill was I picked up a pebble and looked closely at it, trying to see each detail. Uh, the body sensations, moods, feelings, and thoughts that accompanied this practice were I felt light and relaxed. And the body sensations, moods, feelings, and thoughts that I had as I wrote this was I feel content and at peace. And then the other skill, uh, which was on Friday, a couple Fridays ago, the skill was describing. I described my feelings as they arose within me. That's all I wrote for that, <laughs> apparently. But anyways, that was just the homework that I didn't really do too much of it as I was supposed to. But now I'm going to talk about... Uh, let me get to the page. I'm going to talk about integrating doing mind and being mind. So... The mindfulness skills often require a lot of practice, practice, and more practice. The practice ideas below are to help you act skillfully in everyday life, bringing together doing acti activities of everyday life with being, with being mind. So like this is all things that you can do for like wise mind. And if you don't know what wise mind is, I suggest you go back to like my previous videos on my DBT sessions. It'd probably be in like the first or second session. And that talks about doing mind, or sorry, that talks about, oh, you know what? I don't think I ever even talked about this. So let's just do that now because there is um, emotion mind, reasonable mind, and wise mind, but this is kind of somewhat different. This is doing mind, wise mind, and being mind. Um, if you look at the little diagram, that's going to be backwards. But doing mind, wise mind, wise mind, and being mind. So doing mind is discriminating mind, ambitious mind, goal-oriented. When in doing mind, thoughts are viewed as facts about the world, you are focused on problem solving and achieving goals. Being mind is curious mind, nothing to do mind, present oriented. When in being mind, thoughts are viewed as sensations of the mind. You are focused on the uniqueness of each moment, letting go of focusing on goals. So a balance of doing and being mind is um, the middle path, which is wise mind, um, which we've already talked about that. So when in wise mind, you use skillful means, let go of having to achieving goals, and throw your entire self into working towards these same goal, enhance awareness while engaging in activities. So you can see, for an example, the skill of participating would be like a wise mind skill because you're throwing yourself into that, into participating. You're not you're integrating doing mind and being mind, which is like ideally where you want to be. Um, so, um, let's talk about these integrating doing mind and being mind. So number one, a way you can do this is wise mind reading. To increase your desire for mindfulness, find readings or quotations that have the effect of making you actually want to practice mindfulness in your everyday life.
Put these quotations at strategic spots in your life. Example, near the coffee maker. And then while waiting for other things, read the inspirational messages. So yeah, it's just kind of inspiring you to integrate wise mind into your life by putting it places that you will see often on, a, on your daily routine. <clears throat> uh, number two, wise mind reminders. Set an alarm at home, work, or if possible on your cell phone or watch to go off randomly or watch to go off randomly or at set times. Use the alarm as a reminder to be mindful of your current activities. Set up automatic text messages, Twitter messages, etc. to remind yourself. So everybody knows that we get caught up on, you know, what we do on a day-to-day -day basis and about 95% of the time you're probably not being mindful of what you're doing and you're not using wise mind. You're, maybe you're using reasonable mind or emotion mind or being mind or doing mind, but wise mind is integrating all of that and it's basically just saying for you to be aware of the five senses <clears throat> and like, you know, your sensations, everything, and aware of what you're doing at the present moment and to not dwell so much on the past or the future, but to think more about the present, which is wise mind, which is um, what this means. So number three, wise mind messages. Oh, this is actually the same as number one, so I'm going to skip that. Number four, wise mind in the routine of daily life. Choose one routine activity in your daily life, such as brushing your teeth, getting dressed, making coffee, working on a task. Make a deliberate effort to bring moment-to-moment -moment awareness to that activity. So oftentimes with everything else that you're doing, you can't just go from, for example, smoking cigarettes to not smoking cigarettes. I mean, some people can, but this is like a step-by-step -step thing. It's the same thing with with practicing wise mind. You can't go from having no experience with wise mind, never attempting it, to just being completely mindful the next day. So this is basically just telling you to go bit by bit, like start telling yourself, okay, I'm going to be completely aware of everything I'm feeling every day as I'm brushing my teeth. And, you know, just keep going from there, one step at a time. Um, number five, just this one moment, wise mind. When you begin to feel overwhelmed or frazzled, say, just this one moment, just this one task, to remind yourself that your only requirement at that moment is to do one thing in the moment. Wash one dish, take one step, move one set of muscles. In this moment, let the next moment go until you get there. So don't anticipate what the next moment's going to bring. Just focus on your task at hand. Number six, wise mind awareness of pleasant events. Notice events in your everyday life that are pleasant, even if only very small, such as warm water on your hands when washing, the taste of something you eat, the feel of wind on your face, the fact that your car starts when you turn on the key, or that your bus is coming to a stop near you. This, I think I've been practicing since, like, for years now, I've been trying to. It's basically saying enjoy the little things in life, don't fret about the huge things because I think if you do that if you don't take the little things for granted and you're like oh I'm having a good day today I got a iced coffee with a vanilla shot and it was delicious like just little things like that just let that make you happy don't rely on other people to make you happy don't rely on huge things like if you won the lottery you're obviously gonna be really happy but just like small things, like I got a text message that was really sweet today, or I had a lovely shower today, things like that. Because if you make the little things count, if you're struggling with depression, I think that your de depression will slowly start to go away. Not completely, obviously there's other things that you should be working on in terms of that, but I think that that is one thing that is really helpful to do, is to appreciate the small things in life. <clears throat> and you, if you even try to do that, I think you would be amazed at how helpful that is when you practice it. Um, so number seven, wise mind awareness of unpleasant events. Just kind of just going back on what I just said, but it's here. Let's see why it's here. Notice events in your everyday life that are unpleasant, large or small. Use this as an opportunity to become aware of the thoughts, feelings, and body sensations around one unpleasant event each day at the time the event is happening. Okay, that makes sense. 
As you write, also notice your experience is writing, bringing doing mind and being mind together. So I think what they're trying to say is there, while the experience is happening, like, they're not telling you to dwell on what the shitty things that happened that day or whatever. They're trying to, they're telling you basically when something unpleasant is happening, which unfor or unfortunately it is bound to happen, something unpleasant is bound to happen to everybody, right? So while that's happening, focus on how you're feeling in that moment. Don't, don't like just react just observe your emotions I think that's the key to what they're talking about um, number eight which is the last one three minute wise mind slowing down doing mind in your everyday life bring yourself into the present moment by adopting a wide awake posture which I think they mean sitting up straight hands like this on your legs and just like alert i think that's what they mean by wide awake posture and then in wise mind ask what is my experience right now what thoughts and images are going through my mind noting them as mental events as neural firing of your brain what are my feelings and sensations in my body noticing as they come into your awareness saying okay this is how it is right now it is what it is settle into wise mind and focus your entire attention on your breath as it goes in and as it goes out. One breath after another. Gather yourself all together and focus on the movements of your chest and abdomen. The rise and fall of your breath, moment by moment, breath by breath, as best as you can. Let your breath become an anchor to bring you into the present moment. Once you have gathered yourself to some extent, allow your awareness to expand. As well as being aware of the breath, include also a sense of the body as a whole. Your posture, your facial expression, your hands. Follow the breath as if your whole body is breathing. When you are ready, step back into your activities, acting from wise mind of your whole body in the present moment. So I think one of the things that is obviously really good to practice wise mind is to look up meditations. Um, what I have been trying to do every night is <clears throat> looking up, um, well, I haven't really been doing it lately, but I, I did at one point, I have to get back into it, but anyways, look up on YouTube, like, um, mindfulness meditation, um, relaxing meditation, uh, guided, so if it's a guided meditation, you're listening to someone and they're telling you basically all this stuff, and it really helps you relax and to get into that wise mind and if the more you do that I think the better you're gonna get at it obviously at um, being in wise mind and helping yourself get into wise mind because that is when you are probably going to be the most productive and healthy and happy and kind towards yourself is when you're in wise mind anyways I hope this video was somewhat useful <laughs> um, but now I'm going to post this and then make a video, another video, on session 11 because I've, I haven't been keeping up with my videos, but that's going to change now. So take care guys, and I'll talk to you soon. Blessed be.